Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to NFP Day. We had an absolutely insane afternoon in the market yesterday, which we absolutely are going to have to go through today. Um, there are a lot of moving parts. I think a lot of people kind of get the gist of what has happened, um, but we're going to go through that as well and kind of break things down for you guys from that, from that macro and kind of geopolitical perspective so that we can have a better understanding of what's actually going on and how this could affect markets going forward. Now, in five minutes, we're going to be receiving non-farm payroll data. We know how important this is. If it comes out as more people are in the workforce, the market's not going to react well. If it comes out as less people are working in the workforce, again, the market could uh, react a little positively. Then we have to look through those kind of a uh, little bit less important pieces of data, uh, the average hourly earnings, things of that nature that are still definitely going to have an effect, but not necessarily as much as those headline numbers that we're going to see come through the newsfeed. But Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of day. Make sure you guys are saying good morning to somebody in the live chat. If you would like to say good morning to me as well, I would like to receive some good mornings. Let's do a little bit of a roll call. And as always, team, make sure you guys are hitting that like button on the way in. Helps out a whole lot spreading these streams out to some more people. It costs you nothing to do it. Helps me out a whole lot. It's all I ask for around here. So yeah, if you guys, well, we're going to do a little extended stream today and then I have to get on a flight later. So uh, I am going on a little trip this weekend, especially after the absolute wild money printing that we did this week with ACB, SLV, and then you guys saw the uh, the the little 150% SPX trade I had really tight into the end of the day there using one of those strategies that I taught you guys in the mastermind. But let's see who we've got in here bright and early. Oh, what's up, team? We got Alan Blissful, Benjamin J, wreck -It Ralph, David, Joe. We got a couple of people in here coming in early waiting for NFP. I like it. Oh, you guys are doing crazy work on the like button here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tammy's in here too. Good morning, everybody. All right. So let's actually break down. I don't know. I mean, we only have three minutes for this. Let's actually wait for NFP, kind of see how the market wants to react after that. And then we'll go through exactly what happened yesterday uh, and how this is going to affect things going forward. Because uh, for those of you guys that don't have that really solid grip, uh, on like macroeconomics and kind of geopolitical shifts. Uh, this is really important and it could provide us a nice little insight into what the market is going to do over the next few weeks uh, and kind of show us where we're going to look for those rotations. So you guys know me, uh, we were looking for those rotations basically over the last week and a half. Yeah, we were able to hit some of those nasty trades on some of the stocks that we typically like to trade like DraftKings, RKT. Uh, so we had two nasty RKT trades of, I believe they were both over 250%, I think 300% on some of them. Some of you guys with shorter expiration dates were able to make a little bit more. Um, and then with the DraftKings, that one was well over a thousand percent, but the ACB was nasty. I actually sold out of the MO MSOS yesterday at a little bit of uh profit too, before the absolutely massive knife. Uh, right around when that ACB got stopped uh, at a 1 to 10 risk to reward on that final sell. So we hit our 1 to 16 yesterday uh, on ACB. We can actually pull that up here so I can show you guys what this trade looked like. So ACB right here kind of came up. We saw uh, first take profit here was about 525, uh, which was I think about a 1 to 3.5, which was good. Second take profit was I think that was 1 to 11. Wait, hold on. Let me look here. We don't really need that line, but I think it was 1 to 11. Uh, 1 to 10.83, pretty good there. Uh, and then we hit our 1 to 16 up here at 18.16. So that was really good. Came back down. I moved my stops up to 7 yesterday. Those ended up getting hit. Absolutely massive trade there. And then uh, I was selling out a little bit more of the silver that I had from earlier this week, SLV. So this was the day that I was getting silver on the five-minute opening range break. Really nice trade up to these levels here. I had I was able to make it Free, I believe on Wednesday started trimming a little bit more as we came up into those into that 2490 area. Uh, I mean, I tweeted that out yesterday and it also happened to be the top. So really, really dirty one. Did I get that bottom take on film? No, no, no the uh, the SPX one. Nah, I mean, dude, the, I mean, it was like a 10 point move, but it was um, I just traded the options on it because I didn't want to screw around with futures going into the end of the day. And remember, like I had already had such a nasty week uh on the on the uh, like options and swing trading account that i was like mm, i can take a little bit of risk on some spx here was able to i sold a third of it at like 120 150 percent right around there and then got stopped on the rest at break even so 
still nasty days right there. I mean, S that went up real quick. All of a sudden, it was teetering around, doing some stuff. All of a sudden, the order just gets hit. I was like, oh, something must have happened there. But all right, guys, NFP is out. Let's, oh, boy. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Big knife candle so far. I don't see it coming through the news feed yet. So I would expect it's a little higher than expected here. So the payroll number is coming in a little higher. That's what I would expect with this type of candle. I haven't seen it come through the news feed yet, but it should within the next minute or so. All right, it's getting eaten back up. Maybe this is a little bit of a false reaction. I mean, if it held down there, I would expect it to be a little higher, but let's see. Does anybody have it yet? This is big, guys. This is really, really, really big going into the end of this week where we are with the market, especially the indexes. Uh, on larger time frames here. That's going to be really important how we react on NFP today. Data? Yeah, I know. I just don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. Uh, Twitter's being slow today. Where are these guys at with NFP? Come on. There's two accounts, three accounts that I follow that should have this already. It's a minute in. And again, guys, as you guys are filtering in, make sure you guys are hitting that like button on the stream. Helps out a whole lot getting these streams out this morning. We have 30, a couple people in here that have not hit it yet. It Wow. 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 Eddie. Good morning, buddy. Uh, but let's see. I'm trying to find it. I don't see it yet. Oh, uh, here it comes. Nope. That's not it. I don't even see it yet. That's crazy. I mean, we're up 23. Oh, that's nice. 23% on the week. That's ridiculous. Come on, NFP. Come on, NFP. Where is it? Where are you? Hot, 303, 3.8 unemployment. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, if 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 they release the unemployment rate at 3.8%, that is uh, not good. Let's see here. What the, stop. Why does it do this? Why does it like try to get me to sign in here? I don't understand. I'm not signing in. We're going to look at this too here in a second. We're going to refresh the, uh, the, rate, the rate hike expectation. So what is it? Market economic data calendar. I don't, I don't even have a market watch account, I don't think uh yeah unemployment rate came out too why are they being so slow on the feed ralph can you send it to me if you have it can you send it to me i'm shocked that it's not coming through the feed yet i see the expectations how's oil reacting to this where's cl nothing yet es is coming down but nothing crazy Oh, that might be it. Hold on. Hot NFP, but prior revised lower. I'm seeing some statements come through. Where's the data? Come on. I want to I wanna look at it. Where is it? Come on. Well, we can refresh this too. I mean, this is the... So I tweeted this out. 60.1% probability of a 25 basis point cut in June. That's probably going to step down back into the 50. Yep, 59.7 now. Moving off there. And prior revised lower. Huh. Interesting. I'm shocked it's not coming through the feed yet. It's been three minutes. Usually this is instant. All right, we're just going to look it up. Is it coming through on MarketWatch? Because sometimes they update it. No, they haven't updated it either. All right, we'll get it in a second. But I think we should kind of start talking about uh, until we get all of the exact numbers here. Oh, Ralph, I think has it. Yeah, here we go. All right. Uh, I'm guessing actual is... All right, what is it? Where's the actual unemployment rate? 3.8. All right, so that's important. So if the if the U.S. unemployment rate came out as 3.8 versus 3.9, remember what Powell said in the last FOMC meeting? He, he expects the unemployment rate to go from 3.9 to 4.5 by the end of the year. So what we were saying based on that was, well, there's two outcomes and, and two reasons why he would say that one is that he sees data that we do not, which is pretty rare that the Fed is going to be looking at things and not disclosing them to the overall market. So it's not that likely. The second option is, well, the first option, if that was the case, would still be pretty bad because that would mean there's a ticking time bomb somewhere in the market that people don't see. The second thing is that Powell and the Fed is, is doing the worst thing that you can do in finance, trading, economics, anything. 
Uh, you're hoping. He's hoping that it's going to get up to that level, which is not good. Non-farm, whoa, that was big. 303,000 versus, I think the previous mate uh, was 212 estimate, 270. That's nuts. That is nuts, man. I mean, we're seeing it basically hold fl like flat-ish here. But that data is not good. How are yields reacting? Yeah, yields are coming down. That makes sense now. So I think now we can kind of, now that we've gone through a little bit of the data here, we should talk about what happened yesterday in the market. So right around here, like 130, 145, Neil Kashkari came out and said, if inflation does not continue to show signs of moving in the, in the right direction, meaning lower, um, the inflation rate, remember, not actual prices, then we will not be cutting rates this year. That's what Kashkari was saying. Now, the problem with that and seeing the market knife on this is that you have to look at TLT and how bonds were moving during that same time frame. What happened to bonds yesterday around that same time frame? They moved up. Yields came down. Bond prices went up. Now, remember how we've talked about with bonds a lot in the past, how if people are expecting rates in general to be lower in the future or near future, it would make more sense for them to start piling into bonds now than it would be to wait for those rates to come down. Remember, if you could get a 5% interest rate now, let's just say, for example, but you think that interest rates are going to be 3% in the future, why would you wait to buy the bonds you would buy them now, which can add more demand in the short term, which is kind of what, we're, what we saw on TLT and overall bonds yesterday. So what that tells us is that Neil's, Neil Kashkari's comment was not the driver of the market, because if it was, you would have seen people selling bonds because of two reasons. One, they think that they either have more time to go out and then buy those bonds in the future, that they have a little bit more of a time horizon to go out in the market and say, okay, well, we can kind of space out our bond purchases, or they would be thinking, oh, yields could be higher in the future. So why buy the bonds now? So there's less demand or they're selling their bonds now, getting out of that agreement and saying, I'm going to wait for yields to go higher so that then we can then buy bonds and get a higher, basically theoretical risk-free uh, rate of interest. But that's not what we saw. So what else did we saw? Well, we saw Blinken yesterday come out and say, uh, effectively that he is going to fight for Ukraine to join NATO. Now, what people have been saying about that is obviously that could easily spark World War III. That's not good. You also saw oil spiking yesterday. You saw defense stocks, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, uh, NOC. A lot of those different defense stocks started running along with oil. Now, you can tie oil into kind of what's been going on in the, in the Middle East. And you could say, well, OPEC, I believe, just cut production as well. Uh, so that could have an effect on oil prices. And then all of the, the, the turbulence going on over there as well can also have that effect. But if you're looking at conflict as a whole, those defense stocks running, that's war fears. That's literally what that is. So going into today, I'm a little surprised that this market is holding on right now. Just because of what we've seen out of this data. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that we can interpret this guy. So it's really, really, really important. The market is interpreting data in two different ways. Some people are believing what the Fed is saying, and some people are aggressively calling the Fed's bluff. Now, do you know why? Um, this is an interesting kind of history lesson for everybody. And again, I wish more people knew this. Um, again, you guys that are new to the stream are going to learn a metric boatload on, on these streams here. Not only just about trading, uh, swing trading, day trading, but also uh, macro and, and kind of how the overall economy and, and financial markets actually work. Do you guys remember the taper tantrum in 2018 where Powell started to taper asset purchases and people were viewing that as the end of QE, quantitative easing that was happening since 08? What actually ended up happening? Powell was really sticking to his guns. He was saying, we're going to make sure that we're tapering our asset purchases and doing all of these things. Then what happens? All of a sudden, he has a really aggressive shift of tone and he basically pivots and starts QE back up again. So Powell's credibility as a Fed chair is really not great. He's skating on thin ice because he's shown the market in the past that what he says in the present may not be what he says in the future. And he's going to be beholden to basically what financial markets want. Yes, he capitulated. So Powell has kind of, he hasn't quite capitulated yet. You can't view 
what Powell was saying in November uh, when he was saying, we think we've reached the peak of our interest rates as capitulation, because at that time, the data was actually looking relatively good. Inflation coming down, unemployment. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of flatlining and it wasn't going up as much as people thought it would. But the overall headline thing in the data point that people were looking at was inflation, PCE, PPI, CPI. And those were all moving in the positive direction. So that's not the capitulation. The capitulation is... If they start a cutting cycle, now there's a difference between rate one rate cut and a cutting cycle. What the Fed could actually do, and I heard this yesterday, and I thought this was actually a pretty pretty smart comment, is that they could cut rates in June once and then stop. And stair step it down over like, let's say the next three years. Because what you have to realize is, The effects of raising interest rates and leaving them at higher levels is not instantaneous to markets as a whole, financial markets, uh, everyday citizen, everything. It's not an instantaneous reaction to when the Fed raises the overnight lending rate uh, or cuts it. It's not an instantaneous reaction. You got to think about it like a treadmill. And I think this is a really good example of what we've done uh, and kind of how we explain this. Think about uh, a treadmill and the speed at which you're running compared to the to basically the energy levels that the person on the treadmill has. If you aggressively start raising the speed at which the treadmill is running, so let's say that that's a rate hike. Well, initially, within let's say like the first minute or so, that person's not really going to feel the full effects. They're still going to be able to run at the same pace without getting that tired or or, or, or bringing that energy bar that they have down. But let's say after the next 30 minutes, they're going to start getting very tired. So that's what you see with rate with uh, with uh, rate hikes in, in higher rates. So think about it like this, too. If they if with that treadmill example, let's say that they slow down the actual speed of what that or the actual slope uh, of what the treadmill is actually running at. Well, yes, you might feel a little bit better initially, but if you keep going at that pace, well, you're still going to get tired. So what they could do is provide some short-term relief to really the uh, the commercial real estate sector, mainly office space, but that's rate cuts aren't really going to help office space because it's it, it, the situation that office space is dealing with. It, to me, me personally, the way I view it is not rate sensitive. Uh, you can't cut your way out of a problem with, uh, what the hell is the market doing right now? <laughs> what is this? Why are we pumping? Uh, and Christopher, if you want to get the ebook, it's on shortthevix.info. That's where the ebook is. So the free ebook and to be added to my free newsletter that I send out every weekend is shortthevix.info. But Christopher, welcome to the courses, buddy. Shout out to you. You are going to really, really, really enjoy them. But what were we saying? So what was I saying that I didn't agree with? What was I saying? I got... I got sidetracked there. Uh, K-U-L-R, what's that? I'm ticker hunting. Like, I'm very curious at what what's going to happen here. This is not of interest to me at all. No, thank you. If it was if it was back here, I'd be interested. This is nothing for me. So we have silver up here. I I barely have any left of this. Like, it, it, really, really, really tiny position on silver now. I scaled out of the vast majority of this position yesterday uh at the highs and then now i mean i'm just gonna hold that until expiration it either expires worthless or it comes up and hits this target 2643 ccj uranium i am interested in this but it's not it's yeah you're kind of late on it energy xle x all the energy stocks especially oil all those oil stocks have gone absolutely nuts so there's not really an opportunity there but i am hunting for another rotation uh you guys know what happened last time i hunted for a rotation we freaking hit a 1 to 16 risk to reward on acb so we're gonna see what happens, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do some hunting this weekend on my flights. Did I tell you guys where I was going yet or no? With this one, I don't think I told you. I think I gave you guys hints as to where I'm going. I'll show you guys once I'm there tomorrow when I'm when I'm doing some cool stuff. I bought a suit yesterday. Bought another suit. It's pretty sick. Went to the mall with some of those ACB profits. It was just like, suit up, man. Give me whatever. <laughs> uh, but let's see. What's the ES doing now? Well, okay, hold on. Why are we reacting this way? 
Hold on. I got to get back to the news feed here quickly. This is ridiculous. Wow, it actually still never... All right, uh, Nikki leaks for something. Another month of very solid hiring for the U.S. economy. Payroll growth rose by 303,000 in March. And private sector firms added 232,000 jobs. The unemployment rate ticked down to 3.8% in, from 3.9% in February. Average three-month private sector hiring. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's ticking up. That's interesting. That is very interesting. So... I'm kind of debating here. So there's a couple things that I'm kind of floating around. Tell you, please. I'll, it's very, it's very waspy. It's like the most waspy thing that I could possibly do. Just like yesterday's dive had no reason. This rise says that no, yesterday's dive had a full reason. It was, it was Blinken coming out and saying uh, that he wants, uh, that he's going to try and get Ukraine into NATO, which is sparking World War Three fears and defense stocks ripped. Uh, people started buying bonds and the markets aggressively sold off. Um, people were trying to cite at the beginning that it was Neil Kashkari's comments about uh, if inflation doesn't come down, that they're not going to uh, cut rates this year, which is true. But that wasn't the reason the market sold off, because if that was the case, then bought a TLT would have knifed as well, which it ripped. So it was not that. The other. Uh, so what were we talking about? Oh, this is kind of the way I'm thinking about the market here. Um, if you look at history and I, and we're, we're heading down a very dangerous path with the U S dollar, uh, but we've always kind of since really, Oh, all right. I mean, you could go back further, but like, since when we went off the gold standard basically is when it started, uh, Oh, eight was really bad. 2020 was even worse. Uh, so we just keep making a lot of these problems worse and worse and worse and worse. So zero, zero reason to cut rates data. Exactly. Now here's my thing. What's the actual problem with, with leaving rates at these levels? Well, there's two, because if you, if you are able to see economic growth with interest rates being five and a half percent, to me, that's not bad. Um, that's actually a good sign. And it shows the strength of the overall U S economy as a whole. The problem is, is that you've had a lot of, um, almost not necessarily moral hazard not necessarily moral hazard but people people thinking it might be you could label it as moral hazard but people thinking that they can take on a lot more risk and a lot more leverage than they actually should be um when we're in those really really low interest rate environments so i mean higher for longer it it makes sense from a couple of different perspectives but not this high, I think. I think if they back off, I think two rate cuts this year, I think would be smart. Because remember, with the treadmill example, you don't have to like do these jumbo rate cuts. And we shouldn't have low interest rates anyway if we can see unemployment getting going down. And we also see that GDP growth is not slowing. The problem becomes, um, if you cut rates, what happens to certain the prices of certain goods and services? So it's a balancing effect. So let's say more people are in the workforce, average hourly earnings are going up, but then the prices of goods and services also tick back up a little bit, balancing those effects from people actually having a little bit more disposable income. So you actually don't have an effect on the well-being of everyday citizens. There's a very big difference between the actual economy and the financial economy. Well, in the financial economy perspective, you kind of do want to cut a little bit just because of all the issues that are happening in the real estate space. So... Like, I don't have a problem with rates staying higher for longer. I mean, it, like, it, just based on the data, we, like, yeah, we might not cut. But, I mean, going into the end of last year and the beginning of this year, it was looking like we were going to get those three cuts because inflation was coming down very aggressively. Now we're starting to bottom. I don't think it would be smart uh, to raise rates here. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think the Fed is going to do that. But I think kind of leaving it here, seeing where we go, is kind of the smartest course of action for the Fed if – the problem is, is the other issue and that we've talked about a lot that we still need to talk about uh, is all of the United States debt that needs to get refinanced this year. And then what happens if they actually sell all these bonds at higher interest rates? Um, what's going to happen is they're going to they're going to print their way out of it and they're going to basically export inflation to other countries. That's what they do. So what happens is, is a lot of these foreign governments have very significant holdings of, of the U.S. dollar to basically transact uh, in international and like, like do these international transactions through SWIFT and a lot of other different things. Well, when the United States prints money, it doesn't necessarily all like just hurt us. It hurts everybody. 
Um, so what they'll do is they'll devalue the dollar, which they've been doing into almost oblivion to be able to pay all of this interest. Now, if we get to the point where the U S tax revenue, if we get, so I'm really going off here, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this because this is stuff that nobody else on YouTube has the ability to teach you guys. They just don't. Um, and I wish they did, but this is why we're able to do what we do and have the amount of success that we have when we operate in markets. So, uh, if you're thinking about uh, where is it here? So we were talking about SWIFT exporting inflation. So if the United States is just going to continue to devalue their currency, well, it, that's a, that's a really terrible thing that's going to happen. The government is glad it's got some Bitcoin to sell real assets. I get, yeah. I mean, that it's just, it's just a further argument towards Bitcoin, which is weird. Like, I don't want to be one of those guys that's like, Ooh, Bitcoin, but like every single day, it just makes more and more sense. So then if they devalue the U.S. dollar and they can pay off that debt, basically with printed money and out export that inflation to other countries, people are not going to want to be transacting in U.S. dollars because they're just going to get screwed. It's very, very, very dangerous. So we know that that's what the government's going to do if they start if they start having to sell these bonds at higher rates. We know that's going to happen. So then what happens? Inflation goes up. This is the problem too. And I think we should talk about this as well. Uh, people talk about the wrong things. Uh, when you hear people talk about politics, it's really, it's really like it's a waste of time. On the uh, Almost on the right and the left. Uh, typically, you'll see people on the left make more like social arguments and... Um, like like sociological arguments and say oh we want this the these things to be better which sure the the, the ways that you do that are the argument that people will have and the, the, where the debate will happen on the right it's more going to be like uh sort of like fiscal responsibility spending i mean you see all of the new like the uh, uh kind of what you're seeing now with the uh, people being war hawks which is i mean not great but they're never, ever going to solve the actual problem, which is why I say those types of debates are a waste of time. What happens when, it, when you see not hyperinflation, but let's say we turn into like, I saw this term the other day and I love it, a Marizuela. Like what happens when our, our dollar starts to devalue even more? Well, the poor or the people at the lower end of the totem pole here get way, way, way poorer and the rich get way, way, way richer. So then what happens? More unrest. Literally, guys, the only reason why you guys see such clashing on like social issues and all of these things and people doing all this stuff and like all these protests, all that stuff is it literally all comes back to money and the currency. Because if that was not an issue, people would not have they would not be so upset about things. They think that it's like this, these other uh, these other factors, but it isn't. It's always it's always going to come back down to the economy and what the United States does to their currency. Let's think about it like this. If the cost of living was a lot lower and the in the normal average wage in America allowed you to buy all the goods and services that you needed and you had a nice living wage, do you think we'd have all the all the social unrest that we see? The answer to me is no. So when you see all of these things start happening in the market, you have to think to yourself, yeah, that's not good. Because the divide gets even even wider, and then you see more and more of what we're already seeing. So you can debate issues all you want. You're just wasting your time because it's always going to come back to currency. Think about how crazy that is. Think about how nuts that is. That you could, you like if in the, in, okay, here's another thing. How do you solve it? How do you solve it? And this isn't me coming out and being bearish on markets. That's not what this is. Because the way that markets would actually come, like actually really capitulate is that if the Fed stopped providing a backstop to the market and printing money, which we know they're going to do anyway. So that's not what I'm saying. I, like, I'm not saying, oh, no, market collapse. That's not what I'm saying. We already know that, like, in 2020, Fed steps up. In, in 2018, Powell capitulates. In 2008, the TARP program. Like, there's so many different things that you have to think about here where it's like, okay, yeah, if you think about theoretically what could potentially happen, okay, but let's think about how to solve 
the issue. Well, high rates would be an interesting one where you can try and strengthen the value of the currency because if the United States, think about it like this, if the United States uh, had interest rates where they were like at the 10 year, I think it was like two, one and a half. I think they dropped below one at one point. What is what is the reason for uh, international or foreign governments to then go and buy U.S. bonds? Well, there isn't much. If you think about it from if the United States bonds are paying a little bit of a higher yield, well, there's more demand for U.S. bonds, which can help prop up the currency and, and increase its value. But then when they but then when they inflate it away, it's like, all right, well, you're just kind of adding to the pile. You know, you're just adding to the pot. It's like, all right, well. <laughs> so, all right, enough econ ranting. Again, team, as you guys are filtering in here, make sure you guys are hitting that like button on the way in. Hopefully you guys are learning things. I mean, this is stuff, again, that nobody, I haven't seen anybody else have the ability to really teach you guys this stuff. And remember, for those of you guys that are new, I've been doing this since I was 14. I've had the ability, in the uh, not the ability, the opportunity uh, to learn from and kind of ask questions to the people who are the smartest in the industry forever. Um, so whenever I have questions on things, and I've been doing this for a while, uh, we get those answers really quickly so we can have a better picture of the market. And I think it would be a very big disservice, uh, or, or I, I think I have the responsibility to then relay those types of things to you guys so that, again, when we're operating in the market trading, whether it's day trading, swing trading, we have a, uh, a better, more holistic picture of what's actually happening so we can position ourselves accordingly. Do you guys think we would have been able to nail silver without that? No. ACB, I mean, that's just straight rotations, but uh, we've had some pretty crazy map, like TLT sub what? TLT sub 83, we wouldn't have been, or 85, we wouldn't have been able to nail that without understanding these things. So again, it, there are times in which this becomes very, very, very valuable, this type of knowledge. And I think we're kind of getting to a point where using our type of macro uh, and kind of macro and kind of geopolitical knowledge on how things move and kind of how the system in general works can give us a really big edge in the market over the next, let's say, three or four months. A little upset that I missed energy, though. Little, little bit upset about that. Like Exxon, there were some really good setups on that thing, especially for shares uranium uh there are a couple of really good ones early start yeah guys well i mean again remember we're live every day at 9 a.m we started a little early today with nfp so we're gonna do a little bit of an extended stream here so let's do it man and then remember uh i'm up like 23 percent on the week so there's probably not a whole lot that i need to do today um, I want to see the reaction off of NFP. I'm going to be hunting through some tickers, some sectors for you guys this weekend to see if we can get anything for next week. But what I want you guys to remember is that if there's a week where we do not swing trade, that's what we do. And think about it like this. We just hit a 1 to 16 risk to reward trade on ACB. The total risk to reward on that trade was probably around 1 to 10. Probably around 1 to 10. So we are up really, really, really significantly this week. And there's not, not really a reason to do a whole lot. The name of the game, guys, speaking about trading, is to make sure that when you win big, you keep it. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday where uh, what some people will do, and this is a typical mistake that new traders make, is they'll look at the market and say, oh, I just hit a really big trade. And then they'll start looking for setups that aren't necessarily completely a plus and the exact opposite is what you need to do you need to be looking for even more perfect setups when you are crushing it uh in the market just because you've made a little bit of money does not give you the right to act like an idiot and take setups that don't completely make sense that's how that's how you see that chop in your uh in your equity curve where it goes up comes right back down goes up comes right back down you can even size down, risk less. Like with the, just based on that ACB trade alone, I can lose the next 10 trades with the basically the same risk and still be break even. So why would I then put myself in a situation to not try and fully capitalize on what those 10 trades are going to be? To give myself a nut, let's say we hit a one to six. All right, so now we have six more. That's the name of the game. It's not about making money in a day. It's not what it's about. 
and and I talk about this a lot, and I really want to just like drill this into your guys' heads. You cannot think that the market is a fixed income instrument. It is not about trying to make a certain amount of money in a day. That is how you lose. It's literally guaranteed failure. If you try and aim for 1% per day or whatever people are, it just doesn't make sense. It never has, it never will. Because it's going to cause you to make emotional and silly risk management mistakes in the short term when all you have to do is focus on your strictly back-tested data-driven system over the long term. And that's what trading is. TLT moving down. ES just kind of chopping here. Tesla, ironically, nearly the same price as yesterday's open. Tesla remained green yesterday? That's interesting. All right, guys. We got 30 minutes here until market open. Let's see here. What do we got? Oh, this is interesting. What is? That's an interesting chart. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of where the next rotation would be. XLU is an interesting one. Utilities. If you look at this, this looks interesting. So this is the the utilities ETF. That looks interesting, but it did get aggressively sold into yesterday. So it is still consolidating up near the highs. But I want to look for things that like are showing relative strength to the overall market. Like you guys saw me making the joke this week that like, oh, haha, my market neutral portfolio is filled with <laughs> filled with weed stocks and silver. Like because we saw the market coming down and things like ACB were ripping and then silver was also going absolutely nuts, too. That shifted yesterday and was also when I was taking off the rest of my ACB position and most of the rest of what I have on silver. Um, I did hit that pretty nasty day trade though at the end of the day on SPX, that 150 percenter. So you guys are following me on Instagram. I posted it on Twitter too, but that was a good one. Uh, CVNA swing to the downside looks interesting. Yeah, you know what I also looked at? I'll take a look at the, uh CVNA. Yeah, the CVNA looks like it could get a little sally. This is what I was in uh, interested in. No, this one, this right here, socks S. Inverse semiconductor ETF. That I would not be opposed to. If this thing, I mean, it hasn't really validated yet. It needs to shift trend a little bit and consolidate. But I would not be opposed to doing something on a, a SOX S. I would not be opposed. So for me, I'd probably look for the inverse three times levered ETFs and just start slinging shares. Maybe I'll take a couple of like put positions on something that looks weak, like an Apple or a Google or a something like that. Um, the other thing that I'm looking for is one of the favorite, most, one of the best setups that we see. And we talked about this with you guys a little bit in the, uh, in the mastermind. And I think in the swing Kings course too, I mentioned it briefly. Um, look at, look at some of the most successful trades that we've had over the last, let's say five months. So a couple of them are a firm Mara, uh, ACB and a couple of those names. You'll notice a very similar uh, look to those charts before they really run. A firm's a little different. Okay, so a firm we can't really. Uh, a firm's not really one of them. I thought it was a firm, but Mara is one. Hated by the market. Hated, 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 hated. Pops back into our range. Consolidates. Blast off. ACB. Hated, 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 hated. Pops up, consolidates into a range, blast off. I know, Ralph. I know you've been you've been buying Soxess for a while. I know. I'm just I, again. I you, I think you're gonna have a different goal with it than I am. Like I would just I want it as like a short term trade. I think you're kind of taking it more so as a oh semis are really high and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that as a hedge into your long in, into your bigger long term account. Like I could do that too, but I've already sold the covered calls on the AMD. I don't really have to do much now. But the look that you want to see is, and sometimes this, I mean, Rivian was a great one from last year too. Uh, I don't think I have it. It was here. It was a weekly setup down in here. This thing was hated and then blasted. Tesla has the opportunity to do that this year. It almost did it in here. I wanted the break of 206. It didn't break. It invalidated the other way. So that could be something that starts to happen where you see either sectors uh, or specific stocks 
that have been absolutely hated by the market that the market starts to see value in and they start to shift trend, consolidate and give us the entries that we need in order to absolutely blast them, which is kind of what I'm trying to look for here. Sox S kind of kind of applies to that, even though it's an inverse ETF. But that's kind of what we're going to be looking for on those things. David's post more often for bottom fishing. Yeah, I just saw his, uh, what was it, XLK versus 10-year chart. I got to I gotta like look a little bit more on how to read those. Because uh, remember, for me, in the way my brain works, especially with like currency pairs and stuff, when you start comparing stuff to other things, my brain short circuits sometimes. So I got to make sure I focus when I'm looking at those charts. That's like, sometimes I'll just like, there's one specific part of something that like my brain just like doesn't, it works on. I just have to take a little bit more time to like for it to click. Again, I'm really good at a lot of things, but microwaving things, walking upstairs is tough for me. My feet don't fit on the stairs, so like I trip up them all the time. And then uh, reading things like David Sharks or Currency Pair sometimes gets my brain in a twist, but not for very long. <laughs> Wing downside. You take a look at that. Yeah, I mean it looks good. That eh. I, I like I know what you're seeing. It just probably wouldn't fit what I like to do. Again, like if it isn't broken, don't fix it. You know? I feel like when Ralph and I go back and forth, I feel like Ralph gets frustrated with me more than anybody else because he'll tell me things and I'll be like, I ah, I mean, it doesn't really fit what I like to do. And then it goes. And I'm just like, eh, all right, good ice trade. And I, he's like, why did you take it? And I'm like, well, I just, it doesn't fit what I like to look for. <laughs> like the amount of discipline that I have in markets, guys, is, is almost a little too much sometimes. Like I only, I'm like laser focused tunnel vision at what I like to look for. Which I know some of you guys in the live chat hate, but Ralph sends me a lot of tickers sometimes. And I'm like, good. I like this one, but like all the other 20 of them, I'm not a fan of. And then most of them end up working. And I'm like, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, the other one, Boeing. It, Boeing is kind of a like a war stock here. So if we start to see Boeing shift trend a little bit and uh, you see those war fears continue, I would not hate that. Netflix still looks strong. Yeah, Netflix, that's kind of a tough one to get right. I mean, we've hit it a few times. Like the post earnings one was great. This trade was great. Um. It doesn't look bad. It just, there's not a lot of charts here that I'm very interested in, especially after being up 23% on the account on the week, you know? Like one of the reasons why I decided to take that SPX trade yesterday was because I was so green. I was like, yeah, what? I mean, the setup looks great. I'll show you. I mean, in the mastermind, I can show you guys where I did it. Uh, actually, no, I mean, not in the mastermind. In the mastermind, I showed you, I entered this candle right here. Actually, hold on. It's this candle, the 1545 candle, and I traded zero day SPX contracts because I decided to be an insane person and risk a little bit of money. But it was a very tiny percentage of what I had already gained for the week. So whatever. <laughs> like it ended up going up like crazy. So you and I trade different and that's fine. Probably better that way. Less confirmation bias between the two of us. Yeah, true. True. I'm just like, this was perfect. Like the, if you guys want to look at what perfect execution looks like with a trading plan, go on my Twitter and just look at what I was saying about ACB and the plan that I had with it. Um, I, I think we did a really good job of kind of outlining that on Twitter after we entered this thing. I mean, I entered this on the stream on Monday, Tuesday, actually, we didn't stream Monday. Um, and this thing was just off to the races ever since completely followed every single part of this plan to a T five twenty five seven move stops up to six in between targeted that eight sixteen. move stops up to seven ended up it was perfect man uh you would look more into lmt lmt is the only war stock that actually has my attention right now raytheon is not and here's the other thing do you guys remember when we talked a little bit about raytheon and i got stopped back in here the issue with the raytheon wasn't the time frame that i was or sorry it wasn't the actual stock it was the time frame that i was looking at raytheon on so this was a really, really, really great setup here. And you guys can see that it ended up more than following through what we would want. 
but look what it looks like on the weekly. Doesn't that look so much better? Like, look at this Raytheon setup on the weekly time frame. Doesn't that look like, te- that looks textbook, A-plus setup right here. Converging into the moving average, nice consolidation, breaks the level, off to the races, absolutely perfect. So it wasn't necessarily that we got the ticker wrong. It was I was looking at the wrong time frame. I needed to look at it on the weekly instead of the daily. So, I mean, I could have gotten a second entry over there. I just kind of was, I was a little bit angry at RTX. I was like, screw you. But uh, Lockheed, Lockheed does look interesting. The weekly doesn't, but the daily does. The daily has that look to it. So, I know LG. LG, what's up, buddy? How you doing? I know you really like uh, what do you call it? Uh, Lockheed. We remember when we went nuts on Lockheed LG back in what was it? Right as uh, Russia and Ukraine started firing off. Dude, I was trading Lockheed like an insane person and oil. Do you remember that was when we had like a bunch of people in the live chat still too, and people were getting mad at me for trading war stocks, and I was like, "What? Do, what do you want me to do? There's money to be made." Ralph held his RTX. There you go. Dude, you guys are cranking the like button today. I appreciate it. Again, team, as you guys are filtering in, make sure you guys are hitting that like button. It costs you nothing to do it. It's the only thing I ask for around here. Helps me out a whole lot getting these streams out to some more people. I mean, you guys, when I go on these econ rants, I hope you guys are paying attention. I hope you guys, and if you guys, again, if you guys have any questions, same same thing goes for everybody in the courses. When you guys have questions on stuff, I'm always around to answer your questions. If you guys have questions when I go crazy with macro rants and talking about kind of how the way the inner workings of the financial system actually work, ask questions. I'm I'm the reason why I'm here is to make sure that you guys are able to understand these things. Sometimes for those of you guys that are new, I know I might talk a little bit over over like a little bit further than maybe your knowledge base is, but again, there's no dumb questions unless it's Unless the only dumb question is, should I buy a stock that's already exploded? That's a dumb question. Or should I buy a stock that that has has just tanked? Those are the two questions that I don't really like because it just shows that there's no system involved. But other than that, you're good. Oxy back then was a banger. Oxy was great, man. We were slinging Oxy. Like, okay, well, let's phrase that differently. But we were we were trade. We can't even say we were trading Oxy. Uh, what were we doing? Occidental Petroleum, we could say. You were slinging Oxy. That's such a bad way to say it. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. We were trading Oxy. All right. Well, not that kind. The oil kind. Not not the other one. Not the Purdue Pharma one. No, no, no. Not that. (laughs) All right. That's Ralph. I mean, Squirrel, that's also a bad question. Probably none of them. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Fed. <laughs> We're trading stocks, not drugs, all right? Unless we start trading Pfizer and, and Moderna. But other than that, we're good. <laughs> Oh, man. And again, guys, uh, we haven't talked about this today. But for those of you guys that are still on the sidelines... Uh, that have not taken advantage of the best trading education that you guys are ever going to receive. Uh, all my education is 50% off there. If you want the day trading mastery course with the uh, the day trading strategy that's had an insane winning streak, um, that again, I not only just teach you the strategy, but I show you every trade that was taken with it over a 10-month period um, and talk through my thought process through those trades uh, as they play out when I go through and, and show you guys the charts of every single day. Uh, and then the Swing Kings course, where I show you how to find stocks to, uh, that are about to explode before they do, just like ACB over here that we absolutely drilled this week, Draft Kings that we absolutely blasted for over a thousand percent off of this breakout level here. Uh, and then I send you guys those watch lists every single week. So you guys have all weekend, hop in. You guys have any questions, I'll be on my phone uh, answering all the questions that you guys may have. And you guys can finally give yourselves a fighting chance in the market with data-driven, back-tested strategies that you you know what they should perform um, about over time. So it eliminates all of the new uh, the new trader risk management and psychological mistakes. Uh, I think MNMD still has gas. 
MNMD, that was one I did get stopped on, and I'm a little disappointed in that because this was a good setup. It was probably actually another one that was on the weekly. Eh, not really, but again, just the timing on this one wasn't perfect. Um, it easily does. Uh, it's just not going to be something that I'm going to be trading here, you know? You know? MRK is sitting in a gap. You could trade that drug stock down. I could. I probably won't, though. <laughs> i could do a lot of things you guys have i mean you guys have seen me go go scalp city before i just don't like doing it i usually only do it when like i've already had a crazy day like and it's like all right well let's risk a little bit and play around because it's just straight discretion and then you always need to be trading with systems uh is there any way you could ask do private uh day traders we could ask questions and get answers uh the yeah we're not doing that uh you, we do these streams every single day christopher um so you can ask your questions here at any given time and then if you have further questions uh again people will message me all the time and be like is this how you draw it things like that and i'm always getting back to you guys like really quickly throughout just ask anybody in the live chat like i'd get back to you guys like real quick um, but no, we're not going to be doing a uh, private stream, but you guys can ask questions here. ETN still going. I think it is. I think it is. That was another one that we called. Uh, yeah, this one's looking good in the pre-market here. This one was another one from the, uh, the swing Kings watch list from this weekend, the breakout level over like three fourteen seventy five. It's currently trading at three twenty three in the pre-market was really up nicely yesterday up to three twenty six. about, that was a really good one. Really good one there. Let's see. What do we got? 14 minutes to go until the ding ding. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really interested in a whole lot today. I kind of want to see how yields move and then kind of position ourselves for next week. But yeah, ETN does look like it's still going. Uh, didn't want to give any of your trade secrets away as well on YouTube. No, no, no. There's not. You can ask questions. And again, Christopher, like, if I if there is one where I have to like talk for like 10 minutes on the whole strategy, I'll just say, like, just message me. I'll go through it with you on Instagram or Twitter. Let's see. But yeah, like I'm always available to help you guys out. Sometimes if you message me like late at night, it, it will take a little bit. But other than that, bro, oh my God, squirrel. No, we're not going behind a Wendy's dumpster. What are we nuts? What are we nuts? Top tier settings. Uh, what are you talking about? Shoot the moon. I don't know what you're talking about there. What's top tier? Do you have to do a chart? Is that drawing right? Let me take a look. Ralph, we can't stop. <laughs> That's what happened yesterday. The prop firm. I have I've never heard of top tier. Are you talking about top step? Are you talking about top step? Because with top step, you just sign up, they give you a login on whatever broker you select, and you're good to go. Like once you have the the login information, you just go into Top Step and you type that login information in, and then you're good to go. But if it's a if it's called top tier, I don't know. But also, I think uh, that Apex deal is still going on for you guys right now. If you guys want to get funded uh, with futures, I mean they are having an eighty percent off sale right now. There you guys go. There's that link. If you guys want to get, uh, you can have up to like twenty accounts. So you guys could technically get funded. I believe the max amount is like $6 million in funding if you go for the 300K accounts, but they have a bunch of different sizes. The only thing you guys got to be aware of is that trailing drawdown. Uh, but if you're trading smart and you're trading small and, and, and not doing anything crazy, you guys should be fine. Um, so there you guys go. If you're interested in that, there's that link. If you're thinking about getting one in the future, just click that link. I mean, maybe I'll make $2. <laughs> like, who knows? You want one with options though? 
Um, I mean, I have a, uh, I wrote one day the, the actual uh, risk parameters that you would need to have on an options prop firm. Uh, it's a lot. I just wrote it. Uh, accounted for for everything on it but i'm not gonna do that i just got i just thought i i get into mood sometimes where i'm like well if this were to be if we were to do this what would it look like and then i just write it down so i have that somewhere but prop firms are like starting one just seems like a lot of headaches squirrel past the eval during yeah oh there you go squirrel yeah a lot of you guys are passing your evals there you go There you guys go. That's awesome. So yeah, 80% off deal. I think they're doing one day to pass too. So you can pass those accounts in a day. If you have a real good day with them, I think like a 50K account is like what? 30 bucks or something? 40 bucks? Something like that? It's crazy. All right, let's see here. What do we got? 10 minutes to go until open, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Here we go. This is going to be a fun day, I think. I think it's going to be a wild day. I don't know all like what I, if I'm really going to do all that much, but we'll see. You were playing small with micros and it just kept going? <laughs> yeah, dude, that was nasty. So, I mean, you actually had a 15-minute setup. I'll show you where it was. I actually thought about it. It was kind of here on this candle shorting it on this one stops above here you kind of had it here for those of you guys in the mastermind when we went over that strategy and then bloop. it just wasn't it almost wasn't enough for me to want it but i mean i nailed this one this one was good even though it doesn't look like much like you're trading zero day spx going into the end of the day like those were up a lot really quick those were up a lot really quick. All right, guys, nine minutes to go. We're one like away from 50. I appreciate it, team. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, being up 23% on the week with silver and freaking ACB. All right, man, like... <laughs> I think I'm pretty much good. Let's see. I'll probably post what we finish at on Instagram later. S Y R E. Nah, not for me. Not for me. Not qualifying for the setup there. It's just invalidating and bleeding. Actually, you know what looks good? This one still looks interesting on the weekly. That's the monthly. I want the weekly. This one still looks good on the weekly net. I'm kind of interested in this one. I just, mm, we'll see. We'll see what we get. I got I to go to my least favorite place in the world today, the airport. Then I got to go to another airport. Cutting it close. I don't know, man. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting travel day for me. It's going to be interesting. I'll be back Sunday. Woo! It's going to be it'll be fun though. It'll be a good time. What do we got? 7 minutes to go. NFP is out. I mean, this is a weird reaction off of that non-farm payroll data. Not going to lie. This is a bit weird. Um, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. It's very strange that it's the fed is the fed has been trying to give guidance drv i'll take a look at uh the fed has been trying to give guidance and then the the market does the opposite of what it ooh that looks good um the opposite of what it says and then it just does what it wants anyway it's very strange 
Where are we go? Where am I going? In case I'll show you guys where I'm going once I'm there. How about that? You guys will see tomorrow what I'm doing. You guys can take a guess where I'm going. I don't think you're gonna guess it. I give you one hint. It's waspy. <laughs> Let's uh, make sure to wear sunscreen. Yeah, I do need to wear sunscreen. My my forehead is still screwed up from from Florida this past weekend. Cause I like put sunscreen on, but Martha's Vineyard, nope. Missouri, nope. The return of the oozing sunburn. That was nasty. That was really gross. My face was like leather. Dubai. How the heck would I go to Dubai for the weekend? <laughs> I'd literally be traveling the entire weekend, spend 10 minutes in Dubai, and then have to come back. Illuminati initiation? Also, no. A plane? Well, I do have to get on a plane, yeah. Alabama, no. Bahamas, no. I don't think you guys are going to guess it. I wouldn't guess it. It's a very, it's like a very strange place to go. It's like, you want to go to this state? Like, if you just said, do you want to go to this state? I'd be like, probably not. And then you'd be like, but this is what you're doing in this state. I'd be like, yes, I want to come. <laughs> Lizard people reunion? No. Guys, just because I give you guys the dirtiest plays in the stock market every week does not make me a lizard, okay? All right. All right. Market's turning up. Let's see what we're going to get today, team. This is going to be interesting. Good morning, all. What's up, Nate? How you doing? Idaho. No. Connecticut. No. I wouldn't have to get on a plane to go to Connecticut. <laughs> New Mexico. No. Kansas. Definitely not. Hunting. Not going hunting. No. Texas. No. Wyoming, also no. Georgia, no. South Carolina, no. <laughs> you guys are just naming states now. <laughs> oh, Michael's close. He's close, but he hasn't gotten it. Utah, no. All right, guys, we got three minutes to go until market open. You guys filtering in Final Four. That actually would be something that I would do, but no. Because UConn's playing. Remember, I went to UConn, so UConn's in the final four. I don't even know when the gates are. All right, James, definitely not. <laughs> All right, James, let's keep it in the zoo, buddy. All right, let's not get my channel taken down from what you guys are saying in the live chat. I bought SBF's old condo. Probably not. I bet his condo is really expensive. No, I'm not going to the final four. I like that would make sense, but all right, one person said it. One person said it. All right, let's see. DRV looks kind of interesting here. This is the inverse real estate ETF. I mean, it's just not clean. That's the problem. Like, where would your stop be? Like down here? That would kind of suck. He had a whole resort in the Bahamas for his family. He also had a lifetime supply of like basically meth, I think, too. So, you know, if that's your thing, go to the Bahamas. It's not my thing. So, you know, <laughs> not going to be doing that. Just making it clear. All right. Two minutes to go, ladies and gentlemen. NFP day is upon us. Let's see what's going to happen. There's not really any any clear trend so far. We could be in a real chop zone today. But we'll see. Again, if you guys see any tickers setting up, uh, we'll talk about those. Um, but uh, th this is going to be a hunting day for me to see what we, we want to kind of take a look at going into next week. So more so towards the end of the day today to see where things finish up to give us that look to see what could what is moving better than the overall market is. Uh, and that's going to be what we target next week. So that's why we were long all those uh, those cannabis plays this week. Same thing with silver. 
We just got to figure out if there's an opportunity like that next week. If there is, amazing. That would be absolutely epic if we could do that again. Lockheed, I am interested in Lockheed, especially with 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 what we've seen recently. I just we can leave it up. This one does have my attention. If we break this high, I'll take a look. How about that? Are you kidding me, Trading View? You're not going to let me set alerts again? Are you serious right now? All right, we'll just keep a look on Lockheed. Dude, why does my Trading View do this every other day? It like doesn't let me set alerts. All right, ding, ding, ding. Market's open. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, the, the remaining of the silver position that I have left is still up 87%. So not doing anything else on that. Um, I wish I could set up. All right, somebody set alerts on Lockheed. For me. I can't do it here. I don't want to do it on, on Weeble either because my phone buzzes like crazy. So I don't really want to be playing that game. But what's, the, what's up to here? 66? That's not bad. That's not bad for a first target up in there. Boeing not moving, net not moving, ES flickering. Where are yields? Bonds aren't really moving. Tesla's, what's DRV doing? DRV, I don't hate. You just got to give it time. Like this break here could be interesting up to 43. Amazon, what happened to Amazon? Amazon's up 1.36%. They're bouncing off the EMAs here. This thing's just a slow grind up. Lockheed not doing anything. The market moving up. All right, let's see what we get, team. Let's see what we get. We're not going to have a day where we hit crazy take profits today just because we already did it throughout every single other day this week, so... We're just seeing where things want to go. Uh, where is this? 30. All right. So I'm just going to watch DRV there, see if it wants to do anything. What are yields doing? Where's KRE? Regional banking ETF. This on the weekly is going to look dirty. See? This weekly setup on KRE looks nasty. How are the uh, larger banks doing? Uh, JPM. I mean, they sold off a little, but they're probably just... Eh, that's teetering. That's teetering. I mean, if the big banks start to lose it a little here, the regional banks are going to get slapped. I just don't want to be going willy-nilly today because of the week that we've had. Like, being up this much in a week, guys. Like, let me see what it's at now, even with the, the barely... Like, I'm up, what, 22.85% on the week. I don't really... Yin? What's Yin doing? Meh. Down a little. Yin needs the China stimmy and the overall China trade to come back. That's a long-term hold for me, though. The Yin. So I threw, like, nine grand at it in, like, the 20... Between 20 and 21. So if it can drop into the 17s, I'll probably throw another nine on it, nine or 10, and then just leave it, let it go. Uh, SMTC or MTC? Semtech? Well, I don't want to put this on Lockheed because. Nah, Eddie, I mean, you know the deal here, buddy. This is not fitting the setup here. Lockheed not doing anything. Lockheed's also a tough one to get right. It, it moves with a big range, which is kind of why I want to stay. I'd rather Raytheon look better, but it just doesn't. ES coming up. Wow, dude. Look at this buying pressure coming in on ES here. Volume spike. That's pretty big. That's almost as much as it was on the NFP release. Very close. Eh, not really. On that specific five-minute candle, yes, but not on the fifteen. All right, let's see what we got. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean. Yeah, there's nothing on ES. Yin is just flickering. Where's where's this? Sox S is down. Soxo might be having it. Soxo could look interesting. Mm, just kidding. Where's AMD? It's up a little, but it's still getting manhandled. That stinks. Again, that's why I was saying it doesn't make sense to be long AMD in that little range that we were seeing because we needed to see it fully shift trend, then consolidate to get me interested. ACB is booming again. Oh, damn. Did I get screwed on this? Nah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we can watch. Are you guys still in ACB? Anybody that had options on ACB, those were up definitely over a thousand percent. We got in these at four, the stock at 450. It's at freaking 750. It hit a high of 888. Are you kidding me? That's, that's one of the most insane trades ever. The stock, I, my shares were up 88% in three days, guys. That's the power of knowing how to find stocks that are about to explode before they do. Swing Kings for the win, man. You don't need very many of those to have great performance over the year. You're still in ACB? What are you up on them? You on shares or options? The options are probably disgusting, depending on the expiration date that you have. Because the next weeks, I think, got cranked with IV. So, I mean, look at this. So one to, I mean, this is 8.15. I was out at 8.16. So let's move this up a penny. We had a, oops. One to 16 risk to reward trade there. That's disgusting. Shares. Nice. There you go. I mean, yeah, you guys saw my plan with it. Entered uh, right around here. First take profit here. Second one up at this red line, uh, which is now red because that was where my stop uh, got moved up to yesterday. So on the remaining position, I got stopped at, what was the risk to reward here? A one to 11. Thanks. Like I'll take, I'll take some more free money. You guys. So, I mean, we're doing this every week, every week we find, I mean, it's almost like every week over the last five months, we've at least identified one ticker that goes absolutely nuts for us. We're going to keep doing it. You just got to be a little bit more nimble in this environment here because the like the market is telling you that the rotations are happening and different sectors are going to have better moves last week when you streamed that's why i entered there you go Knox. there you go buddy yeah that's awesome you guys are crushing it what strategy do i use uh i i mean i put my own spin on the strategy that like the most successful traders of all time have traded um and that's in the swing kings course i teach you guys that one and then the the day trading mastery course is a retracement strategy um that has had one of the most wild monthly winning streaks ever it's dirty the thing just nails it i think the average risk to reward on those trades with the day trading mastery course strategy is like one to six when you hit double tps it's filthy man those of you guys that have been trading with it i mean you guys see the power of it it's nasty Yeah, ACB split. This thing could continue going. That's fine. I mean, I moved my stop up a little aggressively, mainly because we were already up so much. But what's up, GM? Welcome to the stream, buddy. Tesla. Yeah, where's NVIDIA right now? Ooh, NVIDIA does not look good. Arm? Yeah, they don't look good. Yeah, where's, where's Socks ass? I kind of like it, man. I don't know. I mean, I kind of like this. Let's just, I'm not doing anything on it, but I mean, let me see what mapping this out would look like. I mean, you get it. Let's say here. Stops at day low. I don't know though. I mean, this could be a, yeah, you got such a tight stop on it. I mean, you would target what? Like a one to three to your first TP there. I, I really don't hate that. What the? Hold on. All right. 
Like, I don't hate it. Uh, remember the bad swing I held too much of overnight? Bad trade, good result? No, I know. That was a dirty one. That was a dirty one. Um, let's do this. And let's do... this i don't know this is an interesting one and then i want oh no where's the next one What? What the fuck was that? Oh. Uh, puts on Soxwell a better play. No, it might be. I'm just looking to see, like, if it's going to do what I think it's going to do. Where's AMD? Bouncing, doing its thing. ES is coming up. Let's see here. Now I got to do some magic. There you go. Conspiracy theories, maybe the markets are out of real trading. Uh, what do you mean, real trading? Yeah, then we need to do... Cool. All right, let's see what ES is moving up here. ACB flickering around. Let's see. Uh, moves the more Success barely moves. Hmm. It can. I mean, you can do what it wants. Let's see what happens with it. There's AMD. AMD's bouncing a little. Forex is only real trade. Stop it, Squirrel. Stop. You're going to give these guys a bad idea of starting to screw around with Forex. And then they're screwed. ES is running on this. Look at this, guys. Positive reaction on NFP with ES here. Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's see. Yeah, I mean, that overnight one would have been nice. Those SPX calls at the end of the day, those would have been fun. Dude, it's hot in here. Hold on. I got to turn on the, the air conditioner real quick. Everybody, make sure you guys are hitting that like button on the way in. It is getting hot in here today.
I actually don't have to do that. I can just open the window. How about that? That's easier. I can just open the dang window. Let's see what happens here. AMD's chopping around. I have two AMDs here. Where's NVIDIA? NVIDIA is not looking too hot here. Would love to see uh, tourism and leisure. Tesla new lows. Yeah, Tessie's getting hit there. ES losing it a bit. Not really, though. Everything's just kind of holding. Huh. Let's see. Netflix is cruising? Netflix, I don't hate. Netflix, I really don't hate. That one, I, it looks nasty. It's just a tough one to get right. Netflix is just kind of a tough one to get right there. Let's see. How's it look? And what do the premiums look like for it? Nah, they're kind of jacked. They're kind of nuts on those. Uh, Spain, uh, tourism and leisure sector accounts for nearly 10% of GDP. So in March, a lot of hiring started. Oh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Chips moving up. AMD trying to move back up a little here. Where's NVIDIA? Because this one's going to be a real deciding factor here. Like if NVIDIA loses it from this and breaks down below here, like 850. That's a big move from where we are, 850. Wow. Oh, let's see what we got. Yields are coming down a little. Huh. All right. Interesting day so far. Uh, Boeing accounts for a huge portion of GDP. GDP would be terrible in the coming months with their delivery issues. Uh, definitely could be. Definitely could be. ES just still cruising. Do we have any data coming out at like 10? I feel like we do, don't we? Oh, no, but we have more Fed speakers today. 11 a.m., Lori Logan, and then 12.15, we have Bowman speaking. Ooh, that could get spicy. Ooh, that could get real spicy. Tessie trying to pick itself up a little... Let's see. Uh, well, that could be one of the reasons why the Fed is is thinking that GDP is going to slow. Cash Kari is the spicy one. No, you're right. But like, what did he? It, the, the Cash Kari statements weren't really the. They, yeah, they caused a little bit of a move down, but the real move down yesterday was based on. Uh, what do you call it? It was based on uh, what was said by Blinken. It was not Kashkari.
it is a little surprising to me that ES is moving this way after that NFP data, especially with what, what Powell had said last time, last time at the meetings. Let's see. I mean, this thing is just whipping all over the place. AMD is trying to make a little bit of a move back up here, but that's a nasty candle yesterday. Absolutely disgusting candle. What the? Whoa, 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 Nancy. I mean, it might just be the way it moved. New candle open. I mean, that thing just sharked. If Amazon breaks 52 week high, it's gonna be funny. Well, Amazon is just been it's just been slowly grinding and it keeps hold on. Let's get this on the on the daily here. Like, yeah, it, it keeps getting up there and then gets sharked right back down. It's like, whoa, <laughs> what do you want to do with that? Oh, my silver calls are back up 100%. That's nice. That's nice. Where's DRV? That was another interesting one that we were taking a look at today. DRV was an interesting one. That one could get spicy. It's just not, it's not a textbook setup there. Neither is Sox ass. It's like a weird, like this thing. If like this one would be a very strange one. It would need to pop back through these highs. Like what? Three, what? 354, 10 cents higher here. I mean, it would have to go green and start running, but that would require the semis like AMD and everything really taking another beating today. DXYZ? What's that? What is this? This is just an IPO. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go near this. ES moving higher. AMD moving higher a little bit. NVIDIA trying to make a little move. Silver's on the move again. Nice. Yeah, I mean, those contracts I have are up 100 10 percent there those are pretty good just gonna wait and see what happens on those yes getting a little jumpy here hello where's uh what else did i like where's google no netflix google amazon we've kind of covered all of them there Yeah, silver is on the move again. That actually could be setting up for round two. Silver could be setting up for a little round two there. It's going to have to wait. I wouldn't do anything on this in the meantime. But remember, I have those free contracts that I'm probably just going to hold until expiration and let them go. 30-year losing steam. Yeah, 30 years coming down. Yeah, these yields are coming down a little. Did I get good insurance for my risky activities this weekend? No, none of my activities are risky this weekend. I'm going to behave myself. Where's NVIDIA? 875. I don't need insurance for it, guys. 876. This thing moves like a wild. AMD back above 170. There you go. ES is just reaching. 10 years been directing the market that's also losing steam. Yeah, I mean, you look at TLT. It's, I mean, it's not the 10 year, but yeah, TLT is starting to make a little move higher here. I was it going rafting? No, 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 no. ES moving 
Facebook's printing. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Facebook moving up there. That's nice. I own a bunch of Facebook in the long term, too, so that's always good. Yeah, the SLVs are up 107 and a half or oh, 109 percent there. Those are good. All right, let's see. Hmm, AMD came down a little. Impairs your cognitive performance. Oh, that's okay. We got enough cognitive performance over here. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We got enough of that. Whoa, 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 AMD. Where are you going? Is NVIDIA coming down too? Now, a eh, little bit, but AMD just got whacked a little. Where's SMCI? That's another one I want to take a look at. Yeah, those don't look too good, man. Those don't look too good. Do not trade while taking painkillers. Yeah, what? Don't do that. That would be insane. That would be insane. Uh, you said a limit order at open on your Tesla puts. Went to sell those and found that your limit's it? There you go, Ralph. SMCI back up. Where's NVIDIA? Let's see. <laughs> this is pushing pretty aggressively like especially after that nfp data this is a very strange move paper trading what do you well what do you mean those i mean if you're gonna trade with the apex challenges i mean go for it but i would paper trade futures on just a broker before then uh with the day trade strategy you strictly play the five or the 15 the 15 it's very weird. Yeah, I like I don't understand why the market would be taking this so positively right now. I mean, this could just be a fade NFP type of day where you're like, oh, I mean, just fade it. Cause it doesn't make sense that with what the what Powell has said that now we would be moving like this. No day trade today with NFP? Probably not. I mean, again, I don't even see a setup. Like usually with NFP days, you see like a giant candle in one direction that kind of messes with everything. So in this case, I would say, I mean, there might be a potential for one, but I don't think there's going to be. Need to ask the Wolf of Wall Street guy? Hey, they did all right, I guess. <laughs> they did all right trading on Quaaludes, I guess. No wonder you can't seem to get a good setup on the five. No, 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 Christopher, you got to, uh, Christopher, you haven't gone through, you bought it, you bought the courses yesterday. You can't. It's not, you're going to have to put a little time in watching all of those backtesting videos too. Like don't, you got to make sure that you understand it fully. And again, paper trading, obviously, um, to start, but you need to make sure that like you fully understand exactly what to look for and what it's doing. If you have questions, obviously anybody that's hopping into the courses and taking advantage of the 50% off deal, uh, the buy one, get one free on, on the day trading master course and the swing Kings course. Again, take your time. The strategy is not going anywhere. But I want to make sure you guys understand it. Like, yeah, and, and I talk about that too. And it is the 15 minute. It's always the 15 minute. SMCI losing it a little there. Options expiring today. I may have set some crazy positions or like Carp said. They need to go for the weekend, I guess, man. But yeah, I mean, we haven't really talked about that a lot today. But if you guys are interested in, in one, learning how to find stocks that are about to explode before they do, like the absolutely disgusting ACB trade that we had this week, this one, um, running up through, hitting all of our TPs there. Uh, and then the Day Trading Mastery course that has had just an insane winning streak. Here's the link for those of you guys that are interested. There you go. Uh, just select the all-in-one access and you'll be good to go. And you will be good to go. Paper trading. 
Uh, you just binge watched the videos last night. Yeah, I would spend the most time, Christopher, on the actual part of the course where I sh- like the hour long section. They're usually an hour long where I go through and I show you like actually how it works on a chart. Those are going to be the most important parts of your learning. Did AMD just bounce right back up? It did. Because it's going to show you in real time how the strategy is meant to be executed. SMCI is not having any fun here. Where's NVIDIA? Hmm. Below 870, that could get interesting to the downside. What's the low of day on this? 859? Dude, this range on NVIDIA is just not. I mean, it's an $800 stock, so that makes sense, but that range is insane. Yeah, I'm all out of ACB. That hit my stop and profit at 7 yesterday at a 1 to 11 risk to reward for the final block of those shares. That was epic, man. I mean, that was just an absolutely epic trade this week. Right. Nvidia for me is so crazy it gives you too much perspective to even scalp it yeah I, I i mean i'll swing it sometimes but usually i like to go for like amd amd moves a little bit cleaner amd sharking nvidia coming down es not really making a big move yet but it is starting to move it is starting to move ladies and gentlemen let's see Ooh, amd shark is nvidia down below 870 yet no it's getting close though smci is getting it's not whacked but it is coming down where's uh where's socks s how's that look Hmm, it's trying trying to do something but that would be what the trade would probably look like here right about an entry here maybe at the top here target up in here for first one second one up here third one up here if we would get that move in in like short semiconductors use a broker for paper but use apex for what then uh those you would use the the paper account to just get used to how the brokerages function so like trade of eight you would just open up an account on trade of eight and then just start paper trading on it to just like like so that you understand how the broker works. That's why you're paper trading. Then if you, when you're ready, you go take the prop firm challenges on Apex and then or top step, whatever you guys want to do. I mean, the link to get 80% off with Apex is is the link in the description. I'm not going to throw it in the live chat again, but uh, just use code SAVE80 if that's what you want to do. But then again, then you can start taking the Apex challenges. The paper trading is to understand how the broker functions so you can see when you set limit orders or stops that you have to make sure that you're canceling ones after other ones get hit. That's what you have to get used to. Uh, you said with futures count with Lebo, but they don't have paper trading yet. Makes it very uneasy to open a trade. Yeah, I might try it at some point, but like, I mean, I already have my broker set up. I might just do it for fun, just like throw a little bit of money in Weeble. Uh, good morning, Vix. New here. Love the way you make things understandable. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's my goal here. Rivian's popping. No, nah. in order for me to want to be taking something on Rivian, I need to see it consolidate over 1150. Shift the trend. This is one, though, that I am interested in because the market has hated it. Um, if we can see a nice shift of trend with same thing with Tesla this year, if we can get a nice shift of trend on Tesla and then consolidate the way that I teach you guys in the chat, we can hit another one just like ACB where it just goes boom, blast off. How does ES look on the daily here? 
I mean, it looks all right, but you've kind of created a new internal trend down, shifted here. You've got potentially this 51.67 that you could come down to. If it really wanted to sell. I mean, you had basically bad NFP data for what the market is looking like. Good NFP data for like the actual economy. Not necessarily for inflation, but for the everyday well-being of like everyday citizens. Also, guys, make sure you guys are hitting that like button on the way in. Helps out a whole lot getting these streams out to some more people. You guys are slacking. You guys are slacking today on the like button. Let's see. What else we got? I mean, I'm fine with how we how we traded ACB. It's back down. Six. I mean, yesterday, though, it was down like 11% and then ripped up to that, that final TP, which is... Yeah, so then, Thos, once you're ready, then you take the Apex challenges. Palantir won't be stopped. Where is Palantir? Weekly setup, I think, is still intact. Sorta. It's not my favorite thing to be to be looking at right now, though. I mean, it's up 2.6%, which is good, but. Uh, Amazon is getting on the pub bar to start. <laughs> All right, man. It might be. I, I just, again, I like to stay away from Amazon. It's such a tough one to get right. Let's see how it just grinds up, but it wicks around all over the place. Like there's no period of nice consolidation that we could really target. If this broke up, I would have taken this, but this just broke to the downside there. Let's see what ES wants to do. Ooh, little slip slip here. How can your stops be so small and don't get hit sniper entries? It's just the way that I trade. Um, like my stops on ES are between two and 4.75 points. And it, it's just the way that my strategy works. Um, again, sometimes they'll just get knifed through. It happens. But most of the time when those levels are respected, it's usually you get wicked in and it just runs to your take profits. So like you guys have seen some pretty disgusting trades uh, on my Instagram or TikTok where I just barely get triggered in and then it runs right to my take profit. That's ideally how those trades are supposed to play out because those levels that my entries are set at are so important. Uh, that makes sense. I might miss some of the things as I'm at work listening to you and trying to watch those. That's perfectly fine, man. But yeah, that's, that's, I mean, my, my average risk to reward on the double take profits is probably one to six or one to seven. So when you hit one day, double take profit in a month, when you operate under the, under the guidelines of less trades, more profits, I mean, odds are you're going to finish the month green because you're probably not going to have six losers in a row and the market's not going to give you those opportunities. And a lot of people want, will want to come into the market and be like, oh, I'm trying to trade the, the, do this on the one minute time frame, take three trades a day. That's how you fail in the market. I don't know why people try and do that. They try to treat it like a job and it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, my silvers, the rest of the silver, I mean, it's really small, but it's up 94%. So that's not bad. MRK is ready for you. That's the weekly. What's the daily look like? Daily looks... Ah, it's not for me, bud. I think you're going to know why on that one. I don't really like this. Like, you could have a long setup, but it would have needed to hold this 10, and it's just not. Silvers are back up over 100%. Yes, popping back up. That's crazy, man. I think uh, this move in the market is strange. To me, this is strange.
you're going puts. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that would be the, if if you're thinking about like the the highest probability move of where that's going to go next. I would probably say it's down. It had the ability to hold and and kind of consolidate at that level. It didn't. I would I would be on that one. Where's SMCI? Just whipping around. What did ES come down to? 5260. The ranges on ES today are big. The ranges on ES today are big with NFP shocking the market here. What are yields doing? T yields are coming down. TLT is getting a nice little break here. Look at this. SMCI just went red. Bond yields coming down. People are bidding up bonds. Maybe this is more war fears. What's Lockheed doing? Did Lockheed ever get up to that level? No, but I do like Lockheed here. I kind of like Lockheed. I just are like the, the thing that you would have to think about is, is, or are we going to get war, like war fears this weekend? Cause I've only seen it come out once with Blinken coming out yesterday and talking about adding Ukraine to NATO. I've only seen this happen one time yesterday. So they haven't said anything yet today. If they start really hitting the news feed with some of those things, I mean, you might start to see a little bit of like Lockheed exuberance there. Tesla's back to 170. Tesla coming up. Where's ES? ES is coming up for those highs. AMD's up above 170. I think the market starts pricing in GDP data. It probably wouldn't be good. PCE has the potential to be all right, but here comes ES again. These things are flickering. I just, I don't under, what I'm considering right now is why is the market running when it's doing the exact, when the data has come out in the exact opposite way that Powell has said that he wants to see things. Hold on. I think we got something from Nikki leaks inflation data and not hiring is going to decide whether the fed cuts rates by June. So this is wall street journal right here. Oh, you a-holes. I'm not paying for your stupid, stupid thing. Like, think about it. Powell said GDP growth to slow, unemployment up. Unemployment is now down. So how does the Fed watch tool reacting to this? So it went from 60s to 59.7. What is June now saying? 56.1. So it's still pricing in a lower probability of June rate cuts, and the market is still up. It's Friday. We might get some profit taking later in the day. Profit taking on what though? We've sold off very, very, very aggressively. So that would be my thought where it's like, well, what would we profit take on? The sell? Well, if it's profit taking on shorts, we'd come up. But then with the lingering war fears, I don't know. I think Lockheed could be an interesting one. I mean, I could check the premiums on Lockheed to just kind of get a look at and see what it's doing, but. Because Lockheed's the only one that still looks really good and those contracts can go nuts. It's down today. 
like you'd really have to sling them. They're actually not that bad. The Lockheed premiums are not that bad. Never thought of it that way. Profit taking on shorts is the opposite direction. Well, it would be if we were if we have been selling off like that aggressively. I mean, the profit taking would be on the other side. They'd be covering shorts. They'd be buy. They'd be they'd be selling puts. So then the buying pressure would come back into the market as all those put contracts get unhedged. GDP is April fifteenth, day of the Bitcoin out, and it would be the same day as what tax day. Interesting. AMD's ripping up here. SMCI, same deal. Where's NVIDIA? Did it, is NVIDIA back over, what, like 585 or something? 575. No, it's not. It's close, though. April 8th is the eclipse. Isn't that... That's how a short squeeze works? Well, yeah, but I don't... I, the market hasn't really moved down enough for us to be like, ooh, short squeeze. ACB, I think, was just a pure short squeeze that we caught. I mean, that's that's the name of the game. You have to... The way that we trade and the way that we swing, guys... We are identifying stocks every single time that have the ability to do this. So you're going to have the potential for this to happen every time. It's just, is it actually going to happen is the question. DG is ripping. DG is up there again. This was a nasty share trade on, day, uh, on Dollar General, the, the 1 to 12. That one was disgusting. What's this 449.39 on Lockheed? I just don't know if these war fears are going to continue. I don't know. They could. They absolutely could. I just don't know if that's going to be what happened. I mean, what was this day? Oh, that was Fed. Yeah, it's very strange the way this is moving, guys. Very strange. I mean, it is NFP day, though, and it's still early. So we could see some crazy things start to happen later on in the day. Get, this kind of looks like a dead cat bounce, but not really. I'm just confused as to what is in the data that is causing people to buy. That's the question I'm trying to answer. What is it about the data that we just saw that markets are saying buy? Because even the Fed watch tool is saying no, and yields are kind of almost saying the opposite. Like the Fed watch to tool based on bond prices and what investors are doing is saying no, no cut. But the market is saying we don't care. Uh, well, Blinken said Ukraine will join NATO and that's a red line for Russia and almost guarantees an escalation. Correct, correct. Buying the dip, right. But the, the I don't know. I'm just kind of weirded out by it. TLT back down now. There's a dead cat bounce song, really? I just like, what's the reason? What are they seeing? Because to me, and we're going to talk, we should probably talk about this for the next 11 minutes of the stream that, and we can go through it again. What did Powell say in the last meeting? He expects GDP growth to slow, unemployment to go up, and they need inflation to come down in order for uh, them to be more confident in cutting rates. Well, if inflation is not coming down, and the signs in the labor market are showing that you could have more like you could have more people in the workforce making more money, which can add to the inflationary pressures in the market. And then also just that headline unemployment data is not going to be helpful. So then why are they going against what everything is telling them right now? Granted, it hasn't been very long, but it's just strange to me that they would come in and buy. GDP, if that misses, the economy will not look as strong as it has. I agree with you. 
I, I agree with you. But wouldn't more people in the workforce add to pr productivity? If more people are working, you could then say, okay, well, more people are going to be more productive. I mean, I'm thinking about it from that view of going based on what the Fed has said. AMD popping. I just, I think it's too early to go, to go for the war stocks. I don't think it's time yet. And this would be a nice setup too. So like, even if over the weekend we saw some of that news, I mean, maybe you can play this above, above this candle's daily high. And that he's not concerned with recent data. He hasn't said that he's not concerned. He's saying that it might be a fluke, but you can't rule out that it is. That's what Powell has said about the data here. He hasn't said that he doesn't care. Part of me thinks the Fed sees it as a potential deflation, disinflationary factor. Uh, sees what? GDP coming down? Yeah, but how are you? Like, how, like, what is your argument now for the job? Like the the uh, the ADP employment report or non-farm payrolls today lowering GDP? That I don't quite see. CDE, we can take a look at that. What's this? Mining? Uh, if, if this thing can pull f and go flat for like a week, I would be interested in this. AI is disinflationary. It should be, but it probably won't. So here's the problem. And here's a, here's an interesting thing that a lot of people talk about. Um, and just based on normal macroeconomic theory, as a country gets more developed, and, and is able to advance technologically, you should see overall prices start to trend down over time. Uh, and if you look at, if you think about the US and what we've been able to do technologically, has that actually happened? Mm, not really. Now, AI is probably a different scenario there because you could actually see it replace people in the workforce. But you've seen that, you've seen those kind of things happen many times in the past when new technologies come out that people think are going to take people out of the workforce. So does it actually have that disinflationary effect in real practice? Well, history would show that it actually doesn't. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yes, th theoretically, as you get more technologically developed, the cost of production go down, you're more efficient, prices should then go down. But they don't quite. Because at, think about it from a company's perspective. Your margins would go up very significantly if you can produce whatever goods or services you have at a much cheaper rate while leaving prices the same or even raising prices, which a lot of them do. Like McDonald's has raised prices, I think like a hundred something percent over, I don't, I forget the time frame on it, but it's significant. Subway, no more $5 footlongs. They get $6, six inches now, I think. Uh, layoffs in tech. No, it is there. It is there. We just have to see is that like, I agree. I would, I would agree with the point that yes, if we see like mass layoffs uh, over the next five years, that artificial intelligence is able to come in and, and kind of replace some of these jobs and make companies more efficient. Corporations may not have a choice, but to decrease prices. All right, knee. All right, bud. All right. All right. All right. McDonald's is getting ridiculous. It is getting ridiculous. Earthquake? Where? Taiwan again? That was Taiwan this week, wasn't it, with the earthquake? That was bad. They thought, I didn't think there was, their tsunami didn't happen, but. Yeah, where, Angel? Your whole house was shaping and shaking in Pennsylvania. New York? Really? Wow. I I mean, I felt an earthquake one time in Connecticut. It was weird. It was very strange. All right, James. All right, buddy. Let's settle in here. Uh, do you have any tickers that you felt it there in CT? Wow. Damn. 
Hold on. Is that coming through the news feed? Do you have any tickers I'm looking to add to the long term? I like Hood. I just want to get a better price on it. I don't I don't see this coming through the news feed. Yeah. The earthquake stuff. Wow, that would be bad. You guys felt it too? Wow. Your son wanted to get a Big Mac, and I was like, how about we go get a ribeye at the store? That's great, man. Hey, man, that's a good trade off there. ES slipping a little bit here. California earthquakes must be terrifying. You're like, oh, no, are we going to fall into the ocean? Oh, yeah, here we go. Hearing reports of earthquake in New York City. Yep. Wow. I didn't feel it here in Boston. I, I felt nothing, but it's the end of days. Well, I don't think so, but I saw a really cool video of like a, a prior eclipse where like it passes behind the moon and then it goes like dark really quick. That was really cool. C E L H. Is that Celsius? Celsius not on my radar here. If it wants to pop up, shift trend, consolidate, then I'd be interested, but not ES slipping here. Yeah, Earth. I'm seeing a lot of earthquake stuff. What do I use for the news feed? Uh, a couple things. Uh, fast stock news on Twitter, uh, uh, Delta One, which is Walter, Walter Bloomberg, and I just have notifications on for those. Oh, God, Eddie. Come on now. Yeah, AMD starting to lose it. Yeah, lots of earthquakes. Not lots of earthquakes, but lots of lots of things coming through. Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, here we go. Wow, that's interesting. Well, hopefully it's not crazy. Everybody's safe. That would be terrible. It was just a little tr little tremor. You felt it in New York? Market's not liking it. But, like, here's the other thing that I find interesting sometimes. I, I would almost say that mar everybody talks about the efficient market hypothesis. Like, markets aren't necessarily efficient. Like if an, a little earthquake happens in New York City, it's like, ooh, earthquake. Why do markets sell? Like if nothing actually bad happens, like how does that change valuations of Apple or Tesla? Like there are certain things that happen in the market sometimes where I'm like, how does that have an effect? Like it's strange. I'm like, why is that what's happening? Which, all right, I mean, if, you, if it's going to sell, it's going to sell. Insurance makes us pay for it. Uncertainty. That's true. That's true, Wayne. Uncertainty, definitely a good point there. Uh, market efficiency is accurate long-term, not short-term. That's a good point, too. Over the long run, markets try to be efficient, or they should be efficient. AMD is getting knifed. Fear, I guess. True. But I think Wayne is kind of right on that one. Un uncertainty. Insurance stocks. Uh, what would those be? What do we got? Uh, State, Fa State Farm publicly traded? I don't know. What else? Like AFLAC? Uh, AFLC, I think. AF. AFLAC. AFLAC. Sorry. That actually doesn't look bad. That actually doesn't look bad. Wow. Interesting Friday with an earthquake, ladies and gentlemen. Liberty... Uh, what are the tickers? Oh, what's this? 
magnitude earthquake no, uh, five kilometers north northeast of Lebanon, New Jersey. Hold on, let's look at this quick before I gotta go. Yeah, that's what we got. And then there was one in India this morning. There was one Alaska in Alaska this morning. There's one in California. What's going on? We got so many earthquakes happening, team. That's crazy. Oh, Berkshire. Yup. Yup. All right. We'll take a look at those over the weekend, team. But yeah, 4.7 so far reported. So, team, it is 1030. We are going to be wrapping up the stream for today. Uh, remember, all you guys that haven't hopped in yet, uh, you guys have all weekend to go through the course content. Make sure that you are ready to go for next week. We will get you guys ready to go with that swing list when I send you guys that out, most most likely on Sunday evening. Uh, I'm going to be traveling a lot this weekend again, so we're not going to finish the mastermind before the end of the world. No, we will. Don't worry. But yeah, there's a link to get 50% off all my education. Just select the, uh, the all-in-one access, man. I mean, we've had an absolutely killer few weeks. I mean, I'm up still over about 20, 21, 22% on the week here. It was just absolutely nuts with that ACB and the silver trade. So we're going to keep it going, team. If you want to be a part of it and give yourselves finally a fighting chance in the market with data-driven strategies, making sure that you, you have what you need, there you guys go. So team, I will see you guys later. Peace.